In this video, we're going to learn how to use Laser Cutter from scratch. I assume you know nothing. So, the way we're going to do this is we'll do make a stencil. And to do that, we'll do three things. One, we'll use Corel Draw to make the stencil. Two, we'll use Laser Cut to set up the laser and tell it how to cut the material. And three, we'll actually use the machine and get our stencil. So, let's begin. Number one, open Corel Draw. And just click New here. The black lines is just an A4 paper, so you know roughly how big you're drawing things. So let's click the A here and make a little box. And in the box, we can write some text. How about we write Fox? And let's select the text because it's a little bit small. Let's make it larger. Let's say 60. There we go. Okay, so now the problem is this is not a good font for stencils. But we can simply pick one. This one just called stencil. So you can just click up here for the font so and just start typing stencil. And there it is. Just click on that. So now you get the real font for stencil here. Now, for stencil specifically, it's usually a good idea to change the text into an actual object. What this does is it makes it easier to specify how large you want the text on your stencil. Don't worry too much about it right now. Just follow the steps. So, click on the little tool out here, the mouse, called the Pick Tool, and just select the whole text box, like this. Now, go to Arrange, and then Convert to Curves. So now the little dotted line around it here disappeared. Now we're just left with this guy. Why is that useful? Because, if you select the whole thing again, you can see up here, you'll get actual measurements. So suppose we want our stencil to be, let's say, 5 centimeters or 50 millimeters by 15 millimeters. There. Just hit enter, by the way, and it converts the size. Now we know the exact dimension of this guy. So now we need to put it into laser cut. So select the whole thing again, click File, and then click Export. Now two things are important now. One is the file type right here. It says save as type PLT. This is the file we want. There's a whole bunch of files here. None of them matter for laser cutting. Just like PLT. The second thing that's important is that this little box down here is checked, the selected only. This makes sure that it's only this stuff, the stuff I just selected with the mouse, that actually gets exported into the new file we need for the laser cut program. Okay, so let's call it something. How about Fox? And we export it. That's it for Corel Draw. So let's close it down. Now, step number two laser cut. Here we go. Here's laser cut. Now, we need to open the Fox PLC file we just created in Corel Draw. And to do this, you would think we would need to open it, but we don't. This is something different, which I'll explain in a different video. For now, for our stencil, just click import. This is very important. These are not the same. So use import. And choose the fox thing, which is here. And this is just a setting that's in the program from the get-go. Don't bother changing this, just click OK every time. Here we go. That's the fox. Now this is rather large and it's difficult to get a sense of scale. So you click this little guy up here and you get a bird's eye view of the whole thing. This area is the actual laser cutter. Now, just because the text we have here is in the middle of the whole area does not mean that the laser cutter will start cutting it in the middle of the actual machine. There's a little blue dot up here in the corner, and what it represents is the actual laser that cuts and its position. What this means is that suppose the laser is located all the way up here, which is the default position if you just turn on the laser, then it means that that's where the laser will start cutting from. So if the laser cutting head is up here and you start it, it's going to cut the fox stencil in this little area up here. Okay, So don't bother moving material back and forth and dragging it to the middle of the whole surface. Where this little blue dot is, is where the laser head is. Okay. 
So now let's configure the settings. So let's say we want to make it in HDF, which is a type of hard wood. So there's a couple of things we need to know here. We need to look at the color of the letters, which is black. That's this color here. We need to know the mode. Is it cutting or engraving? We want to cut. So we just click that. Now we need to configure how fast it's going to go and how much power it's going to use. To do that, you double click this. And you get this. So now for the settings, we have little reference cards that you can just look at. Now for HDF, I happen to know that 10 speed and 100 power and 80 on the corners is going to cut all the way through. Now the corner power is, suppose the mouse goes is the laser, the corner power is the amount of power the laser is going to use when it hits the corner and has to change direction up here. The reason it's lower than the power is because the laser, again like the mouse, it's going to spend more time in the corner changing direction. So it turns the power down a little bit to not scorch it. So there's a bunch of other stuff you can configure, like the overlap and the three dots here. Don't bother. Just hit OK. Now we've got the whole thing configured. Now, in order to actually send all that information to the actual laser cutter, you hit Download. And this thing pops up. Once again, none of this stuff matters. You don't need to worry about any of it. Just hit Download Current. That sends the file that you have, which is this stuff up here, to the machine. And now, we're on to step three, and cutting the actual thing on the actual machine. So, let's get a cut one, put it on the bed, on here, then grab the weights, put it in the corners. The reason for this is sometimes the material kind of bends up above the bed like this. This makes it difficult for the laser to cut all the way through, but if you weigh it down so it's completely flat, it's fine. It's nice and solid now. Next thing, is we need to move the laser down to the material. So whenever you want to move the laser, look at the little the screen here. And if there's something black here, if you press the buttons now, you're going to kind of go through the menus. You don't want that. So just hit Escape. Now you can move the laser. So we just want it closer towards us. So just press the down key. Here we go. So next up we need to adjust the focus of the laser. And we do this by adjusting the height of the whole table. So you can actually raise and lower it. There's two steps to this. Number one, hit the set on the controls. That one. And we need the set axis operate mode. What this does is whenever you press up or down now, instead of moving the laser, you're raising or lowering the whole bed. So keep your hand here. Now step two is, you take one of the little measuring sticks here this guy. And then you take the top part of it and hook it onto the lip of the laser here. Exactly up here. This is the important part. So now notice there's a gap between the bottom of the stick and the material that we're cutting, the cardboard down here. So now with your other hand, you just press and hold the up button and the whole bed is going to raise up to the bottom of the stick. We go. Laser's in focus now. The little red dot you see here is not the actual laser. It's just a little guide that sits here that tells you roughly where the laser is going to be. So now we're in focus. Put the stick back. And now we're going to get back and test how large an area we're going to be cutting on. But if you press escape when you're in the set menu here, nothing happens. So what you have to do is press the set button again. This is the only way to get back. So now what we're going to do is check that the area that we're cutting is not larger than the material that we have. So if we hit the test button now, you get a little square around the shape that you're cutting. Okay, so it's going to be a little close to the weight here, so we're just going to move it out of the way. Try the test again. There we go. Alright, so we're ready to start cutting now. So you have to close the lid up here. the start button. And we're cutting now.
Okay, a little noise means we're done cutting. So open up again. This is where the weights help us out again. So sometimes the laser doesn't cut all the way through the material. So you should check, even if it looks like it has, just hold it down with your finger like this so it doesn't move. And just kind of look around on the little uh, shapes that you cut out. Try to pry them up with your nails. There you go. If it hasn't cut all the way through, you should just run the whole thing again. So just close the lid and hit start again. This time, it worked fine. So, get rid of the weights. And there's our stencil. Let's try it out. And there we are. Nice red fox. So now, when you're done cutting, you get these little pieces of scrap. Say so you just cut this out. Then you still have all the material down here to use. You can put this back and let others use it. Other times, what you end up with is something more like this. This is just useless. Just throw it out. Don't bother sending it for anyone. Okay, so you're done cutting now. Let's clean up. So there's a vacuum here. Scrap. Turn on down here. done. Now this has just been the little introductory video. There are some mistakes you can make along the way, but we'll cover this in a different video.